it's time for Facebook Live, everybody. So, yay. Hello, Teresa. How are you this evening? Good to see you on here. I am so excited to be here stamping again. Can't get enough of these Facebook Lives. They're just so much fun. Uh, it's what I get to do on Thursdays as I just prepare projects uh, to demonstrate for you guys on Thursdays. So it's super exciting. So welcome, everyone. Uh, from the 7 o'clock Eastern Time Zone, 6 o'clock Central Time Zone, 5 o'clock Mountain Time Zone, where I am in Wyoming, and then, of course, our people on the Pacific Coast at 4 o'clock. So, yay. Well, I hope everybody's had a wonderful week. I know I had a wonderful week. Um, didn't really do a whole lot of um, stuff. Just did some stamping. Uh, took my son to some garage sales last week. He's um, kind of getting into the garage sailing thing, and... Um, yeah, we hit a we hit a pretty good one. It was an estate sale we found out, and um, I didn't realize I'm not a very good garage sailor. So like, I'll go to a yard sale and I'll see somebody will have a price on something. Hello, Pam. Welcome. Oh, Pam's joining us for the first time. Yay! I hope you're. I hope you enjoy this, Pam. Um, so, like I said, I'm not a very good garage sailor. And um, so we went to this year. We went to the sale. It turns out it was an estate sale, and I mean, they the, the house was just flooded with stuff. It must have been an older couple that had you know, lived in the home for many, 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 many years, had lots and lots of stuff. So they literally had stuff in every room, not just the garage. They had a closed porch. You go into the kitchen, you go into the living room, you go into all the bedrooms, you go into the bathrooms, which I kind of felt a little weird about, but I guess that's how it works. Anyways, you know, I was seeing all these random things and they didn't really have any prices on them. And so I thought, well, how do you, what do you do if something doesn't have a price? I mean, I, I guess I don't, I'm not going to buy it. Well, then I, kind of overheard somebody who had a number of items in their hands walk up to the checkout gal and say, will you take, oh, I think she said 20 bucks for whatever, whatever the gal had. And the lady says, yes, absolutely. And I'm thinking, hmm, she didn't even balk at the price. So I thought, okay, fine. I'm going to go back and grab all those little things that I had found. I mean, I found some pencil lead for my kids' pencils. I found some little those little square little discs that you put in your heat vents in your car, air fresheners for my husband. He has to use them for his work truck. Um, just a bunch of random things that I had found that, you know, I was interested in. So I gathered up all these things and a suitcase. You're not going to lose. I got a suitcase for, well, a suitcase was part of this whole bunch of things that I had. The suitcase actually had a price on it of a dollar and 80 cents. And I thought that, you know, that's way fair, a dollar and 80 cents. So I go up to the gal and I have this suitcase and I have all these other little trinkety things. And I say, will you take $5 for this? And she says, absolutely. Didn't even look at what I had. Didn't question me. Just said, absolutely. So I was like super excited about that. So my son had been looking at this um, fillet set, like a knife set that you'd use to fillet fish. Um, not that he fishes, but um, you never know. He's kind of obsessed with knives. He makes knives, so he has been purchasing, you know, like raw steel, and he's got a bunch of tools out in the garage. In fact, that's why we've been yard sailing, because he's trying to find more tools. So anyways, he found this fillet set, and it had $7 marked on it. So he thought he was going to see if she would take two. Well, he was just so excited. She took $2. So that was our big excitement. So now we are getting ready for a yard sale in conjunction with our neighbors across the street for tomorrow. So I've been getting ready for Facebook Live and getting ready for the yard sale. And of course, I have been getting my stuff for my product shares in. So I've got paper shares, embellishment shares, ribbon shares that I need to get cut and prepped and all that stuff. My in-color club, um, I ordered the stuff for that on Today, Thursday, Tuesday. So it should be here sometime next week. So I've got that going on. And speaking of my color club, if you guys are interested in joining a color club, what it is, is every month for the next five months, you will get one of the new in colors and you get an ink pad and a refill. This is just for Coco Rose. You get all five of them. You get the marker and you'll eventually get the marker case that they all come in. You get uh, four sheets of the designer series paper. I only have two here, but you do get four. You get a half a pack of cardstock in that color. You get two yards of the scalloped ribbon in that color. And then you also get, what did I do with them? You get a section of these. So like this month, I would be giving this person the Rococo Rose section. So you end up getting the full package um, of these. And then if you want, you can add the Stampin' Blends for an extra $10. So the main 
in color club is $33.99 a month which includes the priority shipping directly to you from me and I can set you up with PayPal payments or you can use a credit card whatever you want um, and then to add the Stampin' Blends is just a flat $10 um, which is a little less than what you'd pay to buy them because you'd have shipping and tax on top of that so anyway if you're interested in joining my in color club please let me know I'm going to drop this stuff right down here so it's out of my way um and so yeah I'm getting ready for that too so I've got all kinds of things going on it's summertime my son wants to go visit my brother so I've been scouring um plane tickets prices for that and here's a, a now I'm going to digress again I don't know if any of you guys can fly Allegiant Air but okay we live in Sheridan Wyoming Billings Montana is a place that Allegiant Air flies to so I can drive my son to Billings which is fine we have family there and he can fly directly to Phoenix Arizona which is where my brother is and so he wanted to go July 7th through July 14th well July 7th happened to be the absolute most expensive day he could fly to fly out of Billings on July 7th the flight from Billings to Arizona was $286 which for Allegiant that's crazy and then his return flight was like $58 or something like that and of course then they charge you for your seat and they charge you for your bag but whatever so we had to do a little bit of reconfiguring he's actually now flying on the 2nd and coming home on the 14th so to fly on the 2nd is $48 and to come back on the 14th the price has now dropped to I think it was 47 or 55 something so it was ridiculous so his round trip flight including his two seats and his bag both ways was 180 bucks so he's pretty excited about that I told him he had to pay half of whatever the ticket was so he was quite excited to only have to pay $90 so we got that taken care of so he's going to be out of here which sometimes that's kind of nice when your kids are gone <gasps> Did I say that out loud? Nobody heard me. Anyway, okay. So, as you all know, our brand new catalog is live. It's been live for about two weeks now, a week and a half, something like that. And there are amazing things. I should be seeing who's here. We've got Claudia, Karen, Nicole, Roberta, Charlene, Ricky, Jay, uh, Pam, Kathy, Lavon, Reba, Nioka, Nioka. I probably just butchered that. Sorry. Uh, Pam, Teresa, Linda, Donna, just a ton of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I'm super excited to have you all here. Let's sell bundles with the items. I know, I know. I wish they would sell bundles of that stuff too, but it is what it is. And, you know, we just have to, we just have to move on and go with what they do offer us. So that's why you should join an in color club. Then you get everything after five months. Just saying. Okay. Hello, Brina, and hello, Elizabeth. Oh, let's see what else. So I do have a bunch of new items that when I flip the camera, I'm going to show you when I was actually playing around. I have a reject card. It's not really a reject. It's just a card that I made earlier today that I was going to show you guys how to make it. But then I thought, nah, I'm going to make something else. But I'll show you the card anyway in case you're interested in creating it on your own somehow. Um, I do need to draw for the cards from last week. So everybody who shares my video, so please share the video. There's a little link right below what you're watching that says share. Um, share that to your own page or any other groups that allow that type of sharing. Not all groups allow you to share uh, Facebook Lives into their group. But if they do allow, that'd be great. I'd love to have more people watch me. Um, and so for doing that, then I draw a name out of everybody who shared. And then that person wins the cards that I've created from the previous week. So last week I created three cards. One of them was using the Sailing Home Bundle. So we made this fun card here. Got that little uh, trinket here on the side. It's a little bit of a kind of a, what do you call this? A double time stamping where the center is kind of popped up a little bit. We made this super fun card with the Daisy Lane Bundle, which is a new um, coordinating stamps and a medium daisy punch to our Daisy Delight or Delightful Daisy. Now I can't remember from a couple years ago catalog. And then we made this using the magnolia suite of products so we've got all three of these and the winner for sharing is linda willems l-y-n-d-a w-i-l-e-m-s and i hope that's not backwards but it probably is so it's linda willems so linda i don't know you so i will need you to facebook message me your address please so i can get these cards out to you um i'll throw them back there and they'll be ready for linda to message me okay um as always you guys you can always join stampin up with me at any given time right now um there isn't really any specials going on except that you can get brand new catalog stuff in your kit so that's super awesome um and the kit is only 99 dollars plus tax if you have tax where you live some states do not have tax so it's just a flat 99 bucks you get to choose 125 dollars of merchandise of your choice 
out of the catalog to put in your kit. And I would love to have you join my team. I've got a couple gals watching us right now that are with me. So hello, Charlene. Oh, is there somebody else? I was going to say Teresa. Teresa's not on my team, but maybe you should be Teresa. Anyway, just saying. So yeah, you can always join my team. I would love to add you guys to, um, to my team. That'd be awesome. What else do we have? Oh, another little housekeeping information. The purple posy pad and refill uh, are still not available. That's one of our brand new in colors. Um, there was an issue with the, the pad itself. The ink, it was a little bit foamy. Um, I happen to have gotten one of those foamy pads. And while it did stamp okay for line art, line art images, bold images were really bad. So Stampin' Up! is diligently working on getting that fixed because we want to be able to sell the Purple Posey pad. And as soon as we can order it, I will let you guys know. So the pad, the refill, and of course that does affect the bundle of five pads. Normally you can purchase the bundle of five pads for a little bit of a discount. That is not available right now because you can't have the Purple Posey pad. So keep that in mind. Um, I think that I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here. I think that's all. So I'm going to do the flipper of the camera and then I'm going to show you some of the fun new goodies that I have. And I'll show you my reject card that I made and then we'll start stamping some fun projects. So here we go. Hopefully nobody gets sick from that. I don't know. People say that all the time. Oh, you might get sick, but I I don't know. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. I gotta adjust. Normally, I try to do a tester. Uh, I try to test this before I actually go live so that I can see. And we're gonna move that over. And then I'm gonna zoom in just a bit. And there's my broken glasses. Okay, that's all I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, pick up my broken glasses, put them on my eyeballs so I can see. Slide my soda over here. And let's throw some stuff out. These little gems. Oh my gosh. I actually have a card that I made with them somewhere. In this bag of cards that I have. Here we go. Here's a little card that I made using one of these fun little doohickeys right there on the corner. Um, and I actually think I have another of the exact same card using the other another one of the colors in here yeah it was the pool party one so i've got two different cards two different designer series papers and then we have these fun little gems they are actually called flower faceted gems they're self-adhesive you just peel them off stick them wherever you want and yeah so that's kind of a fun little goodie there what else do we have oh we have this little fun thing this is a little kit. Oh, now I can't think of what it's called. Art from the Heart or something like that. It's a super cute little kit. It comes in this box. So adorable. You get these super, look at these little felt die cuts. Aren't these adorable? There's hearts and flowers and arrows and little scallopy edges. And they come in Coastal Cabana, Blushing Bride, uh, Calypso Coral, and Crushed Curry. And I can't wait to actually make a project. I have envisioned in my mind of stamping some stems. And then adding these little flowers with some glue dots, which I think will be super cute. Um, it does come with a couple of rolls of linen thread. So we have the Calypso Coral and this must be Blueberry Bushel. And then we have some little trinkets that are super, super cute. We have these colored little colored paper clips and then these little tags that say made with love. So if you actually do hand make some stuff besides cards, you could just attach those adorable little trinkets. Okay, let's see. I just broke. You'd think it would be difficult for me to break a nail since I literally have no nails. But I actually, right before we went live, I was opening up a cupboard and I went to close it and I broke. Look how short this fingernail is. How in the world does that even get broken? But yet here we are. So I'm pretty sad about that because if that actually tears off, that's going to hurt. Okay, moving on. Ooh, we have our new paper packs, our designer series paper packs. This is the Brights collection. So we have, look at that gorgeous rainbow of color. Oh my gosh, just, just looking at that just like that, that literally makes me want to smile. It makes me happy. So we have all the different colors in the Brights collection. We have these two patterns. And then of course you flip it over and then you have the gorgeous gingham and then the script in all the same colors. And we have these packs of paper in the Brights, Regals, Subtles, Neutrals, and both in color collections, the current one and the one from last year. So that's really fun. What else we have? We have this little, of course, now I can't even remember what it's called. That always happens to me. 
especially with the new catalog because we get so many new things and I literally cannot remember what everything's called. So we're just going to kind of do a cheater here and look through the book. Okay, here, they must be on this page. Yes, the Bird Ballad Laser Cut Tin Cards and Tin. So they do come in this really pretty tin, which you could obviously reuse for something else after you've used all your cards. And you get envelopes. And look at this fun, pretty envelope flap on there. Love that. And then these cards, look at that. They're already cut and they're lasered. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I should grab a piece of cardstock to stick it underneath of it. How about that? There we go. And then we have this gorgeous laser cut detail on these cards. So super. You know, Nyoka, I did put some glue on it because I'm terrified that it's going to snag on something and it's going to rip off and then I'm going to cry really loud. Nobody wants that. So the bird, what is it again? Good Lord. Bird ballad laser cut cards in a tin. Okay, moving on. We have this cute little tag kit. It doesn't come in this box. I just stuck it in there after I took it all apart. Now i got to find it in the book because I don't remember where it is. Oh, here we go. Tags and more accessory kit. Super cute. So you get all these sheets of tags. There's five different colors. There's four tags per sheet. You get three different rolls of um, Baker's Twine, a roll of copper, what is that, washi tape, 10 little clips, and the colors are Blackberry Bliss, Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green, Pretty Peacock, and Terracotta Tile. And so I just stuck them in one of our old style stamp cases so everything's in there. So here is the washi tape, super shiny. The little clips, which are adorable. Whoops, they just fell off. Here's all the Baker's Twines. So they're white and then the colors listed. And then we have these cute little sets of tags that you can then do stuff with. So I just literally got all this stuff earlier this week and there's so many new things and I haven't had a chance to play with everything, but I'm super excited about it. Okay, so like I said, I just keep mine in this little case just because it just works good to house things. Now here is some fun things. These are our new, oh, I almost forgot about these. Oh my gosh, you guys, check these out. These are the Noble Peacock gems. And I don't know if you guys have seen the Noble Peacock papers. I should run and grab them because they're amazing. I'll leave you here with these pretty gems. I'm gonna run down the hall really fast. Okay, I wasn't kidding, I did run. Okay, so those coordinate with the Noble Peacock. Come on, get off there. Oh, I just had it open today. This is called the Noble Peacock Specialty Designer Series Paper. I literally opened this up today, loved it so much that I went and ordered another package. Yeah, not even kidding. So we have these gorgeous papers with this embossed detail. They're not, there's nothing on the back. They're just like this. And then they coordinate with the Noble Peacock foil sheets. And oh my gosh, here is some more beautiful. Ooh, look at that. There's the green and the, oh my gosh. I hope this video is doing these papers justice, you guys, because they are literally absolutely amazing. They're so pretty. So these all coordinate together. And then these little rhinestones, they have a couple extra colors on there, but you can see how great all this stuff just, oh my gosh, so excited. Yes, this paper is gorgeous. So there's that. And then now I'm gonna show you my card. That was a reject, but it was just a reject for a Facebook Live. I just decided to go with something else. Anyways, so these are our copper dotted treat bags, okay? And so, it is just what it says. It's a little treat bag and it's got copper accents on it. It's a little bag. You can stick some treats in there. You can stick some cards, some jewelry, whatever you want. And they're super cute. But I thought to myself, you know, that would make a really cool designer paper, like designer series paper. So I cut one up. Yep. I cut it in half or I didn't cut it in half. I cut a chunk off and then I actually ended up making this card with it. So here's the bag, the part of the bag that I cut off. And then here is that new daisy set. I don't know if you can see the shimmer of the actual daisy, but I used, we have something new. I'm going to grab it. Here it is. Called uh, Shimmer Black Stampin' Emboss Powder. And so I actually inked up the daisy pieces in Versamark, covered them with this. Can you guys see the sparkle on that? Whoa. 
It's like rainbow sparkle. I know it is just gorgeous. And so I embossed two large daisies, two medium daisies. And then I actually also embossed this piece here in the middle. It is, and we've had these in the catalog for quite a while, these faceted gems. So I took a medium size, you could use the silver or the gold, it wouldn't make any difference. I smashed it into a Versamark pad, dipped it into my copper embossing powder, and embossed it a couple times. And then I added that to the middle. I embossed my sentiment in copper also. And then I took my shimmer paint, my frost white shimmer paint. I got some in the lid and I used the end of my take your pick tool to add these three little dots um, just to some accent. I don't know what you'd even call it, but anyway, so this was my reject. Even though I love the card, I just decided I didn't want to make this. I wanted to do something else. So there you go. So there's kind of like a freebie for you. I just told you how I made it and I use this, this new kind of embossing powder, right? <laughs> or, 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 designer series paper with this. Let's just take a moment and look at this again. Seriously. You guys see that? Is it sp is sparkly? I should look on my iPad and make sure that I, anyways, I'm trying to hold it into my, one of my lights because the rainbow sparkles in here are just amazing. They're so pretty. Okay, so if you don't have this, this is brand new, you should get some. They also have it in white. Um, I'm not sure what the white looks like, but I'm sure the white is super pretty also, but I just thought black with glitter would just really be cool. So anyway, there you go. Okay, now moving on to our first project after I get all these things off my stamp table so I have room to work. Okay, so we are gonna pull this box of goodies up here. And we're gonna be using some of this designer series paper. So I'll put that out so you can oogle and ogle over it for the moment while I get the rest of my stuff ready here. That. Okay, where's my other pieces? We have this, we have this, okay. So isn't that paper gorgeous, you guys? It's called Perennial Essence, I believe is the name of it. And it's very artsy, like, I don't know. I'm assuming somebody drew these or painted these, you know, but wow, just look at how pretty those are. And I mean, you they're literally so pretty. You can just use them by themselves. You can put them on a card base, add a sentiment, like on a, a flag of Whisper Wide or whatever color coordinates with these. And then here's the back sides. These aren't quite as stunning, I don't think, but I think they're very pretty on their own. But once you kind of go from this, you're like, whoa, and then you turn over. It's, it's, it's not as quite as exciting, but they are pretty. And so, yeah, so these are the papers that we're going to use today. We're actually going to be using uh, this pattern right here uh, with some rich Razzleberry cardstock. So I'll put that down with these papers out of the way. We're also going to be using this new washi tape. And of course, I can't remember what it's called gosh this is terrible the person just needs to like sit down and just study the book for days but you know who's got time for that we've got stamping to do it's called the pressed petals specialty washi tape and this stuff is pretty cool it comes with two rolls as you can see here one of them is kind of um a vintagey oh i can't even find the end a vintagey kind of i don't even know what you'd say got some words on it some like maybe even almost like a ruler or something but it's pretty cool but the star of the show is this stuff here this is literally petals of washi tape stuck on this roll okay so there it is and it's just covered in petals and I thought somebody said that they got 20 some flowers out of one roll so I don't quote me on that I'm not positive I thought I read that somewhere that uh, a demonstrator friend of mine actually um, made a bunch of flowers and then I think she said she got 20 something out of it so I'm going to make a flower with these petals and I'm going to start by using a little uh, circle so this is just a one inch circle punched out of white and I'm just gonna stick my petal on there okay so we're going to peel off, we're going to do like six, and I think six is a good number. And we're just going to kind of come around, adding more, I need to keep my finger on the spot here. 
Okay. Here's another one. Oh, I was looking at the comments and I just tore that one. Okay, so be careful with them. Don't do what Barb does. I think it'll be okay. We'll try it. We'll cover it with the next one. Okay, pay attention now, Barb. I think if I try to peel the little bottom piece first, I don't know. I feel like that's just going to tear up the side. So we're going to do what I was doing, but I'm going to pay more attention this time. And I'm just, I'm using a silicone mat also. Just, just because that way it won't stick. 25 petal flowers and had three. Okay, Pam. Perfect. Thank you. That's not too bad. I'm going to use this many. Whoops. I think I want that a little closer to the center. Okay. So I made mine with six. Uh, Pam said the gal that she uh, read about had used five and you could, I think I'm going to move this one too. Move it in just a little farther. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Whoops. I don't like where that one's at. There we go. Okay. So there is my flower. So I already did make one earlier. I got it stuck on a piece of cardstock here. So here's another one that I have. And then we also have these fun little fuzzy perennial essence floral centers. Okay. And they are, they're just like little fuzzy dots. I don't even know what they're made out of, but they are really cool. They have a little self-adhesive uh, backing paper on them, which is fun and easy. And then I'm just going to stick that right in the center of my flower. So now I have two flowers. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and get the card made here. So I am going to toss that piece. Here is my designer series paper. I'm going to add this to the front of my rich razzleberry layer with a very skinny bead of glue. Okay like so okay and then i want to bring in another new product that we have we have the stamp and cut embossing folders the heirloom frames 3d folders and then we have this set of dies the heirloom frames dies these are sold as a set uh let's see here where are they right here. So it's the heirloom frames, dies, and 3D embossing folders on page 197. So you get two dies, two folders, and they actually coordinate with a stamp set on page 14. If you want, you can buy them in a bundle. So you can get this stamp set, this woven heirloom stamp set, um, and the two folders here for $47.50 stamp set, and then the folders and the dies. So not too bad. So what you do is you take the die, and you run it through your die cutting machine. I happen to have a big shot machine. So I did it on Whisper White and here's what I ended up with. Okay, you get a middle piece also, which is here. So this is basically what you get. You get these two pieces. So this one you could use in the center if you want. I'm not gonna use it because this is just a sample. Then what you do is you take the folder and I have the folder here and you open it up. And now these particular 3D folders, if you've been using uh, Stampin' Up! 3D folders in the past, these are a little bit thinner. Our other folders were quite thick. In fact, I probably have one over here. Let me see here if I can find one. Okay, yeah. So this is an old style. This is a new style. So you can see there is definitely a thickness difference. Okay, so this is our new style from our new vendor and they are a little bit thinner. So if you have a Big Shot machine and you, I don't know what you're, what um, sandwich you were using before, but this is a new sandwich. They're also selling a plate that you can use to take the place of the four pieces of cardstock that I'm going to talk about. And I did order it, I just don't have it yet. So uh, what I would do is I have my multi-purpose, or I think it was called the Big Shot Platform. So I had the Big Shot Platform down. I had four half sheets of cardstock. Then I had my folder with my paper in it. And then I had a cutting pad. So but when I get my new plate, I am going to have my platform, my new plate, my die and my paper, and a cutting pad, okay? So how you use this is you now have your oval, and so you can see through the plastic, and I just try to line it up on the inside. 
So what I do is I'm just, I don't know how well the camera is going to show this, but I just try to line it up and I'm just barely moving it as I'm wiggling it around. I want the inside to um, line up really nicely. Then I'm holding it tight as I'm closing the folder and then I'm going to run it through. Okay. And then when I'm done, this is what I get. I did this out of the rich raspberry because this is what I actually want to use for my card. So this is what it looks like. And then you can do the same thing with the rectangle. So you die cut the rectangle and then you would use the rectangle folder, do it the same way. And then you could get um, a rectangle shape just like that. That's already embossed. Okay. Put that stuff aside. So I wanted to use shimmery white cardstock. So I just cut a piece that's two and a half by three and a half. I snipped off all the points and I'm just going to glue that to the back of my oval frame here. So I'm just going to add a little glue on each of these little spots. And then I'm just going to do that. Okay. Because white almost seemed like it was too bright for my project. In fact, I'll throw a piece of white out here. You can see the difference between the white and then the shimmery white. Shimmery white's just a little more vanilla-y, but yet it's not quite as vanilla-y as very vanilla. So we have the white, shimmery white, and the vanilla. So I wanted it to be a little, not quite as bright as the white, but not quite as vanilla. So I've got shimmery white in there. So, so I'm going to end up putting that on here, but first I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And I just grabbed my free as a bird and pulled out the world needs more of you because I just thought that was a really nice sentiment. So I've got a little tiny Knight of Navy spot here. I'm using my Knight of Navy pad on a different project and I get these in my paper pumpkin kits and so why not use them, right? Okay, so I'm gonna stamp, oh, make sure it's not upside down. I didn't have my label on here yet. So I'm gonna put that about like this. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to put this away. The lid doesn't stay on so great, so I've got a little rubber band on there. Shimmery White is returning. Evelyn, I don't think it left, did it? Glossy White left. Boy, it better be in here. I'm going to cry because that's like one of my favorite papers. La, 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 la. Let's see. Come on. Yep, Shimmery White right here. Same. Yeah, it's in the catalog still. It was Glossy White that they retired um, again. So we've got our shimmery white on there and I'm going to, I think, uh, yeah, we'll pop it up. We'll grab a few dimensionals here. Whoops. Do I prefer mounted stamps over photopolymer? Do you mean, do I prefer rubber over photopolymer, Teresa? Is that what you're asking me? And if you are, um... I don't know. I don't really have a preference per se. It's nice with photopolymer that you can see through them, but I really like not having to worry about bringing in an extra foam pad. Like when you're using photopolymer stamps, a lot of times you need to use a foam pad to stamp with them. I don't always remember to do that because I'm not used to it. And so sometimes I forget and then I get a crappy image. So I don't know. I don't totally have a preference um, for me. When I'm lining up, when I'm putting, like I happen to have these little, we used to sell these little, they're like window sh or um, window clings. We used to sell them in the catalog. We don't anymore. And so that's how, when I put my stamps on the block, I line them up with these lines. So that's how I can tell. But if I didn't have the lines, I would stick it on there. And then I do a tester on a scrap piece of paper so I can see how well my stamp lines up with the actual like edges of the block. And then if I need to manipulate, if I need to turn it a little bit, then I'll kind of do that. But I really don't have a preference. Um, I, I like them both. So hopefully that answers your question or probably didn't answer your question because I rambled on way too much. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my two flowers and I'm going to stick them in here somehow. So I'm going to throw some glue on the back of my little circle that I used. And I think, how about like so? There we go. Okay. 
little fuzzy on there. So actually, I think that's really cute. Get that off. What is that? <sighs> it's okay. It's just a piece of paper. And then we have this new crushed curry seam binding. It's three eighths of an inch, I think, or is it a half? I can't tell. Three eighths. I was right the first time. And so I tied a bow with that. And so I kind of, as I was sort of making the card, I didn't actually make the card all the way, but I kind of thought that the bow would look good at the top. So I'm going to go for it. Hopefully you guys don't think it looks terrible. Um, I'm just going to bring a glue dot in here, smash my knot onto the glue dot. And then we're going to add that at the top of the frame just to kind of add a teeny bit more color to it. And now, if we want, we could add a layer on the inside. Where is my shimmery white? I've got everything right here, super close to me, but yet it's never where I want it. So let me cut an inside piece here. Okay, so then we could add an inside layer here because it's hard to see inside of that. And then we could also use another sentiment out of here. This one says, thanks for being you. So let's throw that in. And here's a little tiny flower. Let's just do that too. Let's just do uh, some, some random stuff here that I wasn't planning on doing. Let's see how it works out for me. Okay. So here's my little block thing. I try to line it up and I'm gonna go with I need some ink. Hold on here, some crushed curry and some rich raspberry. Okay. So I am gonna stamp, I think the flowers. I'm gonna stamp, well, this is totally off the cuff. I wasn't gonna do the inside of the card, but it actually, you, you should. Insides of the cards, look they look good. So I think we're going to stamp a few flowers here. Maybe we'll throw in a rich raspberry one. Get my chamois in here. My filthy, disgusting looking chamois. But it's clean because I just washed it. Maybe we'll do that. And then we'll stamp our scent. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want that in yellow. Yikes. Clean it off. Bring in that rich raspberry. And then this paper has lines all over it. So I will kind of... Well, maybe you can't see me. I will kind of use the lines on my paper to stamp to see if my sentiment is straight. It actually doesn't look like it is, so we're going to try it again. I think I tried to force it to be straight and it didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to try it again. It's still not straight, but I think if I just tilt it just a hair down, um, it should work. So let's see like so. Okay. And then I think I'm going to clean this off again. And then I think maybe we'll stamp another couple of flowers up here at the top. And then that should be good. There. And then we can add this to the inside of the card. And then it will be done. Okay, so there it is. Hopefully you guys like it. Let me know if you do. I guess if you don't, let me know that too. I promise I won't cry. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up my mess and we're going to move on to our next project. And I'm going to clean off my stamps. Since I have my chamois handy right here. I need that. This we're going to stick to the side because that's going to be our of our cards we give away next week and we will move on to our next project okay now i'm going to bring back in the sailing home and the come sail away stuff because we're you know on the hills of father's day and so you know if you need a last minute card this would work it's a good card to, to use and let me get my papers out here so these are the designer series papers the come sail away papers and then here is my Papers. So we've got Knight of Navy, five and a half by eight and a half, a white five by five and a quarter by four for the inside. I have a stitched rectangle. I'll have to measure that one because I don't remember. And then I have some die cuts and some tiny pieces of paper. Okay. So here are the designer series papers. Super great for man cards. And I actually have some cards that I can show you guys. Let me grab them using um this set of goods and I think I have some more that I got in swaps 
There's one. I thought I had more, but maybe I only have those few. Hmm. Well, that's not terrible. Let me get this out of here. Okay, so I have a few. We've got one that uses the sailboat. Uh, we've got here with the uh, lighthouse, another one with the lighthouse and a sailboat. And then this one that I did a video on here a couple, or maybe a week ago. Anyways, so we're going to be using uh, these goods to make more man cards. Well, I guess it couldn't have to be just for men. Ladies like sh sailboats too. You don't want to be, you know, sexist or anything. So that paper aside. All right, so I'm going to measure this one because I can't remember what it is. So this is the second largest stitched rectangle, okay? And so... Uh, this layer here is like three and nine sixteenths. It's a little bit bigger than this. And then this one is a little uh, four and seven eighths. Okay. So we're going to layer these two things together. Add a little snail on there. And I, I cut it. I don't want a ton of border of this piece of crumb cake, just a little bit, just so it's not just plain white against the navy, okay? And then our knight of navy here. Ugh, can't see. Hopefully that was folded in half, right? You know how it is sometimes when you can't see? That's me. Okay, that's going to end up going in there. That we're done with. All right, so then what I did is I cut some of the designer series papers. I just picked a couple of patterns that I thought looked good together and I cut myself some little squares. These are one and a quarter inch square. Okay. And I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue, four spots of glue. And then I'm just going to put these trying to put them on so that they're like equal distance. Oops, that one's got some fuzzies hanging off of it. That is no bueno as my kids would say all right here we go let's try this again and i like to use liquid glue when i'm doing stuff like this because i have a lot of room a lot of time to wiggle these around and get them where i want them okay and then this one is going to go down below that and then this one's going to go below this so you can just see i'm just kind of eyeballing it I mean, it's, I'm not expecting it to be perfect. I would like it to be perfect, but it's not going to be. So there you go. Okay. And then I have a sentiment from the set that says, set sail in the direction of your dreams. And we're just going to ink that up in some Knight of Navy. Stamp that down here towards the bottom, like so. And then our back card base, I'm going to... Oh my gosh, look what I just did. Stuck my finger right in the ink. Hello, Shammy. Come to me. Yeah. <sighs> Story of my life. Okay, good thing I caught myself because a lot of times I don't. And then the next thing I know, I have a big old splotch mark right across my paper, which is super annoying. All right, I need to scrap paper. All right, so I'm going to use this rope image. I'm just going to kind of... Uh, stamp a few rope images on the background here. I'd love for them to be perfect, but I just don't have that kind of time that I care that much. Okay, and now my, um, what do you call it? My main image is going to be um, covering up the middle here, so I don't have to go all the way through. At least I shouldn't. We'll see. Hmm. And then on the outside, I think we will. Yes, the chamois does work great to take ink off your fingers when you're uh, a little bit blonde. Well, I shouldn't even say that because that's terrible. I was blonde when I was a kid. I'm not anymore. Now I'm gray. <laughs> Which is fine. Nothing against gray hair. I just don't particularly like it for myself. Okay. So we have a little bit of a background. So now we can set this on it. Mm, nah, I'm not going to pop it up. Okay. I think that's random enough that no one's going to notice that it wasn't perfection. Alright, so we press that down. Okay, 
So then I need my Stamparatus. Where are you Stamparatus? Because I've been using um, this these products. Oh, here's my host code if anybody needs to place an order. I would love to have your order at shoppingwithbarb.com. And here's my June host code. Free gift to purchase. All right, shameless plug out of the way. Okay, so I've been making swap cards with this particular bundle. And so when I'm making multiples of stuff, I like to use my Stamparatus because it just saves a lot of time in stamping. So what I do is this. So I took this piece of white cardstock. I wrote the word up on it. Whoops, maybe it's not in the frame. I wrote the word up on it so I would know whenever I stick it on here. Um, this is the side that's up. Yeah. Um, where's my magnet? I had it. I lost it. Okay, so I've got that right there in the corner. I've got my magnet to keep it in place. And so what I did was I put my white piece of cardstock in here. I inked up my stamps. I just threw them on there, inked them up, stamped them. And then I took this piece over to my die cutting machine and I was very careful about the placement of the dies. I placed them on there really carefully, really perfectly, and I tacked them all down with the washi tape so that they wouldn't move when I sent them through. And so now all I have to do when I wanna stamp one of these images is I just cut what I call a blank. Okay, so here is a blank um, anchor out of soft suede. And now I can just pop that right in there and then I can bring my soft suede ink pad in here and I can ink up this anchor. Okay, kind of trying to be a little bit careful. I don't want to get ink all over my other stamps, but I feel like I'm having trouble getting that edge. There we go. Okay, so I now have ink on my anchor. And then when I stamp it, it's going to be perfect and it'll be perfect every time. Yay. So that has been super helpful for the Stamparatus. I mean, I don't know if it would help um, you everyday stampers that make like one, one card at a time, but it might because a lot of times, you know, um, if you make a card, you want to make another one or you want to use, you want to work with the lighthouse first and then you want to work with the sailboat and then maybe you want to throw an anchor in. So um, I just find it to be a super helpful way to um, stamp quickly is to use the Stamparatus. So there is my little tip. Make sure I don't have any um, ink on my hands and we will get this out of the way. Okay, so... I have my anchor or I had it. It's got it. Oh, there it is. Okay. And then I also went ahead and die cut a ship's wheel. So in case you guys aren't familiar with the stamp set and the dies, here is the stamp set. Here is the smooth sailing die set. And you can see that we have coordinating dies for the lighthouse, both of the sailboats, the large and small, the anchor, and then we have a tag shape that fits both of these larger sentiments. We have this little fun tag here that fits the thanks and the congrats. We have, um, this is a circle punch, a one and a half inch circle that will cut out the compass here. And then there's also some other die cut images in here. We have the seaweed, the ship's wheel, uh, the rope knot, just the strand of rope. And then we have uh, two dies that make up, if you want, the spinner on the compass. And then I just added a one of our metallic pearls to be like the center of the compass. So that is what the Come Sail Away bundle is all about. All right, so we have our anchor. Good Lord, almost forgot what it was called. So I'm gonna use some mini dimensionals here. And we are just gonna put this on the card right across. Whoops, I don't need that dimensional backing there. Like so. And then my ship's wheel, I thought I would just add right here on the corner, just as another uh, little piece of fun. Okay, so then on the inside, we've got our inside piece here and we have this little tag. And where did I put my little congrats stamp? Here it is. Okay, try to put it on there so it's, somewhat straight. We'll see how it works. And 
where is my scrap paper again so I can do my tester. I always try to do a tester uh, just to sort of see how it's going to work. And then I'm going to do it up here at the edge. It actually looks fairly straight, so I don't know as I'm going to have to make any uh, compensation, but we shall see. Okay, here we go. Well, it's close enough. That's all I can do. All right, so where did I put? I had another, oh, here we go. I have this little rope piece and this other piece of designer series paper. So I'm going to stick this on the edge of the inside layer so it kind of goes along with the front. And hopefully my hair isn't getting in the camera. I'm having some trouble seeing. You know, it's one of those distances where your bifocals don't quite hit, but then your distance vision definitely doesn't, you know, because it's too close. So, all right. We're going to stick our little congrats right inside here. Mm, about like so-ish. And then this little rope knot. Add a little bit of glue to that little guy, and I thought he would kind of look cute right down there at the bottom. Okay. And we'll add this to the center of the card. There we go. So, I think this is kind of a fun card. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Got some fuzzies in there, so there it is. I will clean up. I'll leave that there for your viewing pleasure while I clean up my mess. I'm going to clean off my stamps, too, here. Just because I find if I don't and I throw them back in my little bucket, then... You guessed it. I end up sticking my fingers on them and making a mess. Okay. Oh, and this was my inspiration piece. I should show you this. I had gotten this card in a swap a few months ago, and I just thought it was really cool. So these pieces are actually cardstock that was embossed with our swirls and curls folder. Paper for stamping your silicone stuff. I know, Jerry, and what I normally use is I just normally use my foam pad. I've got some paper wrapped around it, so it's right here. It's easily accessible. I just don't always access it. You know what I'm saying? So here's my inspiration piece. Here's my new card, so yay. So I'll stick that in the pile to give away. That one goes over there. And we will move some of this junk out of the way and get ready for our last project. Okay. Now, as a little bit of a slacker, like I said, I just got my new catalog order in earlier this week. I think I got it on Tuesday. Today is Thursday, yes. So I've only had it for like a day and a half. Well, this was one of my new stamp sets that I ordered because it's just so cute. And then I also ordered, of course, the dies that go with it, the dino dies. And normally I have a cheat sheet for you guys showing you how cute everything is. I don't. I haven't had a chance to make one yet. But... I will take out a couple of these pieces that we're going to use. We're going to use that little Tyrannosaurus Rex. And a Tyrannosaurus Rex holds a little special place in my heart. As you guys know, Tyrannosaurus Rexes are uh, famous for their short little arms, so they can't get stuff. Well, about seven years ago, I think it was, I was riding a snowmobile, and I went over a super tiny little jump. But I landed pretty hard and I landed to where, you know, your arms come back and your chest goes forward. So you kind of do a number on your shoulders. But I didn't think anything of it at the time. Well, that was like in February. Well, by July, I had um, I had two frozen shoulders. If you've never heard a frozen shoulder, let me just tell you, you don't want to hear a frozen shoulder. I hope you never know what frozen shoulder is because it is literally the absolute worst thing I have ever been through in my life. I literally was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I could not move my shoulders. What happens is because of the trauma that I suffered from the, the tiny little crash, which wasn't even a crash, and I didn't even know that I had injured myself for months afterwards, um, my shoulders start to create scar tissue. And that scar tissue is very hard and it prevents your shoulders from actually moving. I mean, literally, I could only move my arm from like the from your side up to about you know straight out I could not lift it any higher than like straight out I couldn't move it to the back I couldn't move them out to the sides 
they were literally frozen, which is what the term is. And I had both of them. Most people only end up with one. I had two. It was horrible. I literally had frozen shoulders for about a total from beginning to end. It was between 18 and 20 months. I had to sleep in a recliner in my living room because I could not lay down on my shoulders. I had to lay on my back. Um, <laughs> my doctor prescribed to me tramadol. Now, if any of you have ever had tramadol, it's worthless. It doesn't do anything except, in my opinion, make you not care that you are hurt. And so we had gone on vacation and my kids, every morning, they would be like, Mom, have you had your I don't care pill yet? And if I said yes, they would say, oh, can we have some Cheetos? And you know what my answer would be? It would be, I don't care. So they kind of liked it, but it was horrible. Anyway, as I had done all my research on it, it did fix itself. I ended up getting cortisone shots. They literally did nothing except cause me excruciating pain. The, the, the scar tissue uh, dissolves on its own and my shoulders are like 95% now. But anyway, so if any of you have had frozen shoulder, you can totally relate. If you haven't, I hope you'd never hear of it. Moving on. Here's what we're using. The Dino Days and our little friend Tyrannosaurus Rex, who's my buddy. Um, we've got his little um, spikes on his back. And then we also have, I was one more thing I was using out of here. What is it? Oh, no, it isn't. Okay, just those two for this project. Okay. Then we're also going to use the Designer Series paper that goes along with this set. And I'm going to grab that and show you those things here. Okay. So stinking cute. I'll start with this side. Okay, so we have this little fun pattern, that fun pattern, that one, those fun eggs, more dinosaurs, dinosaur tracks, and then we'll flip them over and we have this, and we have this fun little scene. We have that kind of same outlined dinosaurs in the pink. We have these little guys, some more of the flora and fauna, and then check this out. So here you get two sheets of this particular pattern of designer series paper. Look at this. These little dinosaur dies will cut out these dinosaurs. Isn't that fun? Here we have a pterodactyl. And we have the little brontosaurus. Or no, that's not a brontosaurus. That might be a stegosaurus if you add the spines to the top. Here's the brontosaurus. And see, you can actually cut those out with the dies. So cute. Okay, but we're not doing that. We're going to actually stamp some and cut some out. Then we have a little pine tree die. Pine tree. Palm tree. Sorry. Okay. So, pieces and parts. What do we have? We have Mango Melody uh, card base which is eight and a half by five and a half. We have a piece of Whisper White, which is four by five and a quarter, a scrap for some stamping, a piece of the pattern paper, which is one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then we have, well, like I said, our papers for stamping. So let me find, first of all, we need our dinosaur and his back spines. So I've got Pretty Peacock. This is one of our new in colors, and we're gonna do his little spines in the pretty peacock and then I have old olive for our friend the dinosaur and I think he'll fit on here about like so and here I am using photopolymer stamps without a mat see what I mean I just can't seem to remember but yay for me it worked out and it's okay all right then we still need this and we still need this I also have a 7 8 wide piece of pool party the length doesn't really matter because I'm going to trim it off um, but I'm going to add my little sentiment here. This is your Rowersome. So it's definitely kind of uh, more of a, a little kid set, but I don't know. I think my daughter would totally appreciate this, and she's almost 18. Okay, so pretend I went to the big shot and cut out my dinosaur and his spines. Okay, so then when you line this up, you end up having this part here that you can add your glue to. And then we'll just add it to his back, like so. Super cute. Okay, so he's done. This piece here, I'm going to snip off a bunch of it. And then I'm going to come into the center 
and then I'm going to come in from each point on the outside to make the sentiment piece. So this we don't need anymore. Okay. Then what do we need? I don't need this. And I've got my palm tree trunk and my palm tree frond. And then, so I'm using the palm tree trunk. Here's a little palm frond. And then I'm using these little circle guys right here. So I'm going to bring in my piece of white. And I'm going to also bring in, this is a ribbon in the catalog. It's new and it is called, let's just read it. Old Olive Pretty Peacock Reversible Ribbon. So it does have, it's very sheen, very shimmery, and it's got a really nice crazy sheen to it. So on this side, the sheen is almost like the Old Olive. And then if you turn it over, then it is definitely um, the Pretty Peacock. And you can see the Old Olive edges on this. So we are going to use uh, this ribbon here. So I need to cut off a little chunk. It's the same length-ish as my uh, card base here, or my card layer. There. Okay. And then I am going to add some snail to the back of this piece of designer series paper. I'm going to bring in a silicone mat because I have adhesive on here. And I actually want the blue side up. And so I'm going to put this on so that I just have a tiny bit like I don't know like a sixteenth of an inch maybe sticking out above the designer series paper uh, but making sure that I um, that it's even okay that looks even okay I can get rid of that so now I need to add some more snail to the actual ribbon and to the designer series paper and we're going to add this to the bottom of our white layer. Try to. So how many of you guys like this bundle? A uh, show of heart emojis. So throw me some hearts if this is a bundle of products that you are enjoying. All right. Then I'm just going to wrap that around to the back and tape it down. Oh, my word. You know what? This is ugh, barb. Barb always does stupid stuff like this. All right, let me think here. I need to put a palm tree on here. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp a palm tree. And then I'm going to race to my big shot machine and see if I can die cut this really quickly. Or actually... I feel bad if I have to leave, so it might take me a while. I'm just going to try to trim it out. Okay. So it does have a die that goes with it, but I am going to quickly just try to cut it out instead. Jeez Louise. Why, Barb? Why? Okay. So let me just kind of do something here. I'm going to cut it off about like that. And where's some glue? Here we go. I do this kind of silly stuff all the time. It is so annoying. Okay, well, I mean, it's still going to work out fine, but that's just annoying. And actually, yeah, it should be okay, I think. Okay, we're going to just move on and we're just going to try to make it work. Um... Although, you know what? Okay, here's a tip. You guys know I'm always full of tips because I'm a dingbat and sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to peel this up because I don't want that. I don't want it to do it like that. Okay, I'm going to take the tape off my ribbon. And... Yeah, so a three-minute card is going to take, it's going to take Barb a long time. I'm going to pull this off. And sometimes if it doesn't want to come off easily, I'm going to use my heat tool to loosen that snail adhesive that I put on there. There. Okay. Because I just did not want to do it like that. Okay, now I'm happy again. 
Okay, since I have some adhesive on here, I'm going to bring this in. Now, I can do what I wanted to do in the first place. Valerie, I totally get what you're saying, but I just had to have it because it's adorable. Okay, so here we go. This is what I wanted to do. So we can, like, pretend that that whole other fiasco part <clears throat> never happened and that this is what we're doing. Okay, so now we're just going to add our palm fronds. And we're just going to kind of go around the card. And I'm going to end up going off the edge, and that's totally fine. I am meaning to do that. That I did mean to do. I don't always mean to do everything I end up doing when I'm stamping, but that I did. Okay. There. Now, we're going to put this back on. Good grief. Oh, I tell you. You know, there's good days, and then there's meh days. <laughs> this is this is going to be a good day. I'm going to I'm going to turn it around. Okay. Now, I'm going to stick those to the back just like I did before. Gosh. Getting that. Okay. Like so. Then I've got this little fun little dotted image, and I am going to stamp a couple of these. like so okay because i'm gonna add my little sentiment up here and i just wanted something around it that was kind of cute so i thought those little dots were kind of cute okay there we go and then our little friend here our little frozen shoulder buddy we're gonna grab a couple of dimensionals here and add them to Pam, you totally should buy it. It's so stinking cute. Blonde days, that's my excuse. <laughs> I love it, Valerie. Okay, and then he's right there. Adorable as ever. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so that I don't get any ink. Have any other problems with this card? Okay. Oh, what is that? What is that? That's on my finger. See what I mean? Well, it's a good thing it's where it is because our whole thing is going to cover it up, so it's no big deal. Luckily for me. But then I'd have to get a new piece out, and I guess it is what it is. But I don't really want to do that. Okay. So here's our little friend on the front. And I do have some younger nieces and nephews. And I also have a customer who I just saw her post on Facebook that her daughter loves dinosaurs. So, Melissa, if you're watching me, you totally need this for your daughter. All right, so I'm going to burnish that down. Okay, there it is, you guys, our third card. So I'm going to bring in my other cards. So as I mentioned before, if you need to order any supplies, I would love your business at shoppingwithbarb.com. Use my monthly host code for free gifts. And here are the cards that we made today. So share the video because next week somebody is going to win um, all the cards for sharing my video. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, join my team at barbstamps.com. I've got other fun projects at barbstamps.com. And if you order from me, I do have a VIP page and I will add you to my VIP page where we have a lots of fun also. And I hope you guys enjoyed everything. I had a great time stamping with you and I will see you next week. So... Bye, everybody.